All right, I'm ready. Good evening. I'm Dr. Emmett Brown. I'm standing on the parking lot at Twin Pines Mall. It's Saturday morning, October 26th, 1985, 1.18 a.m. And this is temporal experiment number one. Come on, Einie. Hey, boy, get in there. That a boy. In you go. Get down. Get your seatbelt on. That's it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. Please note that Einstein's clock is in precise synchronization with my control watch. Got it? Right. Jack, Doc. Good. Have a good trip, Einstein. Watch your head. You got that thing hooked up to the car? Watch this. Yeah, okay. Got it. Not me. The car. The car. If my calculations are correct, when this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious shit. Jesus Christ, Doc, you disintegrated Einstein. Calm down, Marty. I didn't disintegrate anything. The molecular structure of both Einstein and the car are completely intact. But where the hell are they? The appropriate question is, when the hell are they? You see, Einstein has just become the world's first time traveler. I sent him into the future. One minute into the future, to be exact. And at precisely 1.21 a.m. and zero seconds, we shall catch up with him and the time machine. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Doc. Are you telling me that you built a time machine? Out of a DeLorean? The way I see it, if you're gonna build a time machine into a car, why not do it with some style? Besides, the stainless steel construction made the flux dispersal. Look out! Uh, Doc? Oh, that's peculiar. Uh, where's the car, Doc? It should have caught up with us 27 seconds ago. Doc, uh, wh what happened to Einstein? No need for concern. It's probably just a minor miscalibration of the time circuits. Marty, could you get my notebook? It should be in the toolbox. No time to talk now, Marty. Go to the toolbox and get that notebook. Notebook, notebook. Got it. Flux capacitor? That's it! What the heck's a flux capacitor? My latest invention. The thing that makes time travel possible. In this notebook, I detail the nearly three decades of scientific breakthroughs necessary to build a working time machine. If it ever fell into the wrong hands, the consequences could be catastrophic. That C is mass equals I times C and E equals the square root. Doc, something's way off here. No! 
I'm sorry, Marty. Ah, come back! Ah! Marty, is everything okay? Yeah, Mom, I... It was, it was just a nightmare. Uh, I was in the past, and, and Doc was there. Well, you're safe and sound now. Back in good old 1986. But you'd better get up. Your father's waiting for you. Huh? Weren't you going to meet him over at Doc's? Holy crap, I'm late. Are we too late to stop the... sale? Better late than never. You wouldn't believe how much rare stuff there is back here. That's Doc stuff. The city has no right now, to... Now, son, I know you're upset, but your friend's been gone for months, and the city really seems hell-bent on using his land for that new parking garage, and... Hey, is that a first edition Jules Verne? It's just not fair. But at least things can't get any worse. Hey, Marty! Hi, Biff. Come to see if the old crackpot had any buried treasure? Nah, I guess I'm just... remembering. I miss Einstein. Does nature contrive it so that even with a time machine, you can't intervene to prevent your own conception, for example? Doc didn't take any of these with him. Doc built this model at Downtown Hill Valley way back in 1955. The clock tower in the courthouse even works. What the? Is that Doc's notebook in there? Hey, that looks just like the courthouse. You gotta hand it to the old coot. He was good with his hands. Uh, Biff, uh, can, can I see that a minute? This would look great in my fish tank. Give the old carp something new to nibble on.
Can I see that model courthouse for just a second? I need to get something out of it. Like what? A not guilty verdict? That was a joke. Oh, huh. but really, can I? No, I think I'll hold on to it. Give it here, Biff. Well, well, look at what we have here. Looks like plans for something. What's a flux catheter? It's none of your business. Doc asked me Clowns to... worm food, kid. But this looks like it might be worth something. Ha! Huh. Hey, let me try, Marty. Now, Biff, let Marty have his turn. You got it, Mr. McFly. Enough of that junk. Now, Biff. Sorry, Marty. Seems kind of empty without the courthouse. Hope that wasn't poison gas or anything. Feels like that was a lifetime ago. Actually, I guess it was. I sure did love his Jules Verne. Doc must have whipped up some crazy compounds in that cauldron. <laughs> well, that smells like beef stew. Hey, Dad, why's my guitar got a price tag on it? Sorry, son. Must have been an overzealous clerk. Just pick it up. I'll iron things out with the bank. It took me forever to repair this thing after I blew it out last time, and now some jerk's gonna pick it up for pennies. Let's make some noise. Fish tank? I never knew Doc raised fish. Doc's fish had weird taste in decor. I kind of like Doc. Hey, let me... Now, Biff, leave Marty alone. This is a very emotional time for him. Oh, sure. Sorry, Marty. Dad. I'm telling you, this sale is a joke. Doc's only been gone for a few months, and I happen to yes, know... Yes, you've told us he's not dead. He's on a trip. Let's say you're right. Have you considered that this trip may not have been entirely voluntary? I hate to say it. But Doc's run up some pretty sizable debts around town. Maybe he's just hiding from his creditors. Do you think dreams can predict the future? Well, you know I don't go in for that mystical stuff. But I do think they can reflect how you're feeling about the future. About Biff, Dad, I, I know you're trying to help. He talks a big game, son, but he's not so tough. I've been dealing with him a long time. Believe me, I can handle him. So can I. 
I guess you can. Okay, son. I'll stay out of your way. But you know where to find me. Who's running this sale anyway? Oh, that'd be me, son. You? Why? Well, once it became apparent that the bank was going through with the sale, I volunteered to oversee it in order to make sure that Doc's stuff would be treated with a modicum of respect. Isn't that right, Biff? You got it, Mr. McFly! You got Doc wrong. Sure, maybe he's not so good with money. That's just because his mind's always on bigger things. But he's still a straight-up guy. He'd never run away from his problems. Well, you know him better than I do, son. But the bank is within its rights to sell off his stuff. Maybe you should try to find some things to remember him by before Biff grabs them all. Problem? Biff? He's got this... thing, see? And I really need to get it back. If he stole something from you... No, it, it's one of Doc's notebooks. Yeah, he found it first, but... Oh. Well, then I'm not sure what to tell you. I guess you'll just have to appeal to his better angels or something. Or something. I'll keep looking around. Thanks, Dad. Hey, Biff. I just can't let you keep that notebook. It's dangerous. What, is it set to explode or something? Well, uh, in a way. I'll take my chances. It's just a notebook with Doc's scribblings. What did Doc ever accomplish? Nothing. And yeah, then it's worthless, right? If it was really worthless, you wouldn't want it so bad. That notebook wouldn't mean anything to you. You wouldn't even understand what's in it. You calling me ignorant? Ah, uh, never mind. Took me forever to repair this thing after I blew it out last time, and now some jerk's gonna pick it up for pennies. look like much, but it packs a wallop. Here's an oldie, but a goodie. One, two, three. <laughs> hey look, it's Chuck Butthead. Let me show you how it's done. Watch me blow the lid off this joint. Whatever you say. Rock on, Biff. Oh, shit. Ah, Doc. Where are you? <laughs> 